All right, so we're gonna start with these two numbers in our notebook. Um, I want you to give yourself a little bit of space, maybe draw a box around them if you want. Um, don't put them right next to each other. Um, I only had to do that because I didn't have enough room up here. Um, these are our two numbers we're gonna start with today, okay? So your job is you need to round it to the nearest 10. And if you wanna put it underneath like this kind of, or you could say round to nearest 10, and then round it to the nearest 100. So I'm gonna give you a quick second to do that. And this is just to kind of remind us that rounding with whole numbers is the same as rounding with decimals. Our place values are different, um, but it's still the same process. So I'm gonna give you a real quick second. Is there anyone that could do, walk us through both rounding to the 10 and the 100? If you want to just shout out, that would work. I can. I will. Okay, Radian. So when I'm going to round to the tens place, where do I need to start? At the tens. It's tens. So what number should I underline for that? The middle number or second back number. Yeah. In this case, it's a two, right? But is that two actually a two, Radian, or what is that two? Ten two. Ten twos? Eh? Ten twos. Two tens. Ten twos and two tens are the same thing. But if it's in the tens place, we're not going to say it's group of two, it's groups of tens, right? All right. So now, which direction do we look, Radian? Right, 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 right. Okay, so I go to the right. Right, 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 right. And now what do I do? If, if it's five or more, mm -hmm. bump the, make the one swallow 10, and now it becomes 30. It becomes 30. Five or more, raise the score. So it's it it. 730. And Ridian, why don't I leave a six there? Why don't I leave my six? Why don't I just change my tens, please? It got eaten by the two. <laughs> okay. That works. We were sent two. Some of you guys like your number lines, right? And some of you like to say, okay, I have 20 and I have 30. Where would 26 fall? We know 25 would be right in the middle, right? So 26 would be somewhere like right here. It's closer to 30. So I know there's a few of you guys that really like using your number line and that absolutely works. Um, some of you guys like the process, like Radian said, look to the right, five or more, raise it up. Um, and then the reasoning would be 26 is closer to 30 than it is to 20. Thank you, Mr. Radian. I would like to have somebody else walk through the hundreds with us. What? Who could do the hundreds? I can. Hey, Bella B, what do I need to do for my hundreds here? So we're basically looking at the hundreds place, but we look to the right and it's well, What number, can you tell me what number's in my hundreds place? You're to seven. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to do a different color on this one, okay? You said look to the right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now what do I need to do? Two, you got to keep it the same or round down. Okay. So would I round it down to 720? No, why not? Because when you round, once you round your number, everything after it goes to a zero. Yes, thank you. So everything after that place value becomes a zero, right? It needs to be a whole hundreds. And so like you said, in this case, if it's rounded to the nearest hundred, 720 is not a hundreds number. So this is one of those examples, if you were to do it on a number line, if we had 700 and 800, you need to figure out what 100 it's closest to, right? We gotta get rid of those tens. So that's the good way to say it, Bella, is that everything after this place value becomes a zero. I now have 700, zero tens, and zero ones. Good. 
So I'm actually gonna make this harder on you guys. I think we can do more than this. I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna change this because I think you need harder one that, than what they think you need. Okay, we're gonna change this to a decimal. Let's do that. Um, you guys are fine at rounding thousands. Let's do a decimal instead. So instead of 8,729, let's make it eight and 729 thousands. Do you guys think you're ready for the challenge? What do we think? I sure hope so. Um, so your first one, let's do our nearest whole number. Nearest whole number. I'm just gonna write here whole here. And if you guys wanna write whole number, you can. It's just a little harder for me to write it. Nearest whole number. And I'm gonna push you guys to actually round it several different ways. The nearest whole number nearest tenth and the nearest hundredth. And I'll give you a couple minutes to work through this. And whenever you're done, will you just holler out and then I'll know we're ready to go? I'm done. Thanks for letting me know. We'll let everyone finish real quick. I was actually done with like a few minutes earlier. Okay, that's fine. Um, Rydian, if you want to challenge yourself, I can give you another number up here as well. Does that sound good? Sure. Okay. Let me throw some zeros in there too. How about that one? You want a challenge? Top right corner is a challenge. I made it a little bit trickier because there's a lot of zeros. So if you happen to finish early, um, that one's a little bit of a brain buster. Is there anyone that would like to walk us through the process? And maybe someone we haven't heard yet, so maybe not ready and not LB. Um, how would I round this to the nearest whole number? What would I need to do to do that? Is there someone else we could hear from? You could look at the decimals. Okay, perfect. And that's what, I think this one's kind of funky, right, Justin? Because we're trying to round it to a whole number, but we need to look at the decimal. Can you explain to us why that works? Because if you're rounding to a whole number that you can't, like round say tenths to a hundred mm -hmm. ten to a hundred you know okay. so you need to go farther right as right as you can to the decimal so i have my eight thousand. is my whole number right yep i always look to the right what do you notice when you look to the right you have a seven and what do we know about a seven it is higher than five yep so what does that do to our eight it rounds it up to a nine. A nine. And then Justin, when I have this nine, do I need anything after it or no? No, if you're trying to go to a whole number. Exactly, and that's where some of us were getting a little bit tripped up. We were writing nine and, oh, we're writing nine and zero tenths, zero hundreds, zero thousandths. Do we necessarily need that, Justin, or no? No, because those zeros hold no value. Yeah, they come after. They hold no value. I don't really need to write nine in zero tenths, zero hundreds, zero thousands. Okay, well, I could just write nine then because I don't have any of those tens, hundreds, or thousands. Beautiful. Now I'm going to ask for somebody else. You guys are doing a good job of participating today. Um, who could tell me how to round to the nearest tenth in this case? I'd love to hear from Asher or Leah or Tyler, Quinn, Maddie, any of you guys? I'm thinking. Sure, okay. Anyone else ready? 
Could we hear from you, Miss Aaliyah? I'll help you through it. I'm kind of like having trouble figuring out which one's the 10th place. Okay, great. So let's do it together then. Um, all right, so we know this is our ones. We're not working with our eights, right? Our eights hanging out, he's there, he's a whole number. To the right of my decimal, what place is this seven in? The tenths? Yeah, the tenths. So I like to always underline what number we're working with. So we're working here, and we have to look to the right. And to the right, Aaliyah, we see a two. What's a two going to do? Round down. Round down, right? So I need to keep my eight holes. So I'm going to have my eight, and then I'll have my decimal. My eight holes does not go affected in this case. My whole number stays the same. I'm going to my nearest tenth. You're telling me, Aaliyah, will my, seven, will my seven stay the same or will it turn into an eight? It'll stay the same. Exactly. And then what's our rule? Every number after that place value becomes a... Zero. Zero. So you could add those zeros on the end, but really you don't even have to. Really, if we're rounding to the nearest tenth, you can just stop at the tenths place. So you could just say eight and seven tenths. How does that work, Leah? Good. Now that we've worked through it, does someone want to try our hundredths? I can do it with you. Miss Maddie, I'm going to have you do it with me. Uh, Maddie, what value, or what, I guess, excuse me, what digit is in our hundredths place? Nine or seven, I think. Well, so sevens are tenths, so the next one over would be our hundredths. So two. Two, yep. So I would underline my two. I know I have to look to my right. Maddie, we have a nine next door to our two. What is that nine going to do for us? It's going to round us to a three. Exactly. Do I need to change my eight or my seven tenths? I don't think so. No, no, you're right. So my eight and my seven tenths stay the same. Everything before my hundredths, I cannot change. You're telling me my two becomes a three and then everything after my hundredths would become a zero. But again, if we're stopping in the hundredths place, we could just stop right there. We don't really have to put our zero thousandths in. Um, so you guys are seeing that we're rounding, whatever place value we're rounding to, everything after it becomes a zero because we're rounding it to that place value. And then everything before that place value has to stay the same. If I'm rounding way over here in my hundredths, that's not going to change my eight holes. If I'm looking at my tenths because it's next door to it, yes, it will change it. But if it's two or three place values away, this guy's going to hang out and stay the same. So with this rounding, it can only round the number next door to it. My two can only round my seven. My nine can only round my two. My seven can only round my eight. I can't look way, way, way over here and say, round it to the nearest whole number and say, oh, well, I have nine thousandths. You're always looking just next door. So you're always working just with these two numbers that are next to each other. So just the place value you're working with and the number to the right. Everything else after it becomes a zero. Or if I'm working here, let me undo what I just did. If I'm working here with my two and nine, let's say I'm doing hundreds and thousandths, only these two numbers can change. It's not going to change anything before it. Everything after it can become zeros, but everything before it just has to hang out and stay the same. So hopefully we're able to um, work on that one a little bit more. Um, I'm going to do, so I'm going to skip over the graphing lesson that we were going to do today. Um, I don't think it's a priority and it's going to be incredibly difficult to do it without um, Think Central. And luckily for you guys, it's just reading a graph, which was huge in third grade, huge in fourth grade. Um, I'm not terribly worried about our graphing skills at this point. I'm more worried about us interpreting our decimals. 
Um, so I'm going to give you, I hope everyone got a chance. Is it okay if I erase this, guys? Does everyone have this written down? Yep. Okay. I got it all written down. Cool. Um, and this is in your Splash Learn today. Um, so if you're feeling good about this, um, your rounding decimals, I have rounding actually exactly this in Splash Learn. Rounding to the whole number, rounding to the tenth, and rounding to the hundredths. So this exact lesson is in Splash Learn. So that should be very, very helpful. Um, I want to do one last one with you guys before I let you go, though. Miss Anderson? Yes. I have a saying that maybe you guys can... Oh, are you there, Bella? Do you want to try muting and unmuting really quick? Uh-oh, because we can't hear you, honey. Oh, are you there, Bella? Yeah, I'm okay. here. Can you tell us you're saying? Five in up, round up, four and below, go low, and zero is the hero. Oh, that's a good one. I always said five or more raise the score. <laughs> but yours is even, so we could even combine them. Five or more raise the score. Would you say four and below, go low? Yes. Great. So that's actually really helpful, you guys. And um, zero is the hero. Zero is the hero. Okay, so I'm going to give you one last number, and I'm going to make it a little trickier because I'm going to throw some zeros in. Um, so I'm going to make it, let's do seven. And this is going to be a little bit of a brain buster for you, okay? Um, let's do one. Okay. And then I like to do mine in separate colors, but obviously if you don't have separate colors at home, do not worry about it. I'm gonna do this with the text. It might be a little small, but hopefully we can see this. The nearest whole number, the nearest tenth, the nearest hundredth, and then, yeah, we don't need to do thousands right now. We can just stop here, just because you guys are warming up. Um, if you do have separate colors, it might be kind of helpful for your brain um, to underline. I'll do my tenths and I'll do my whole number in blue, my tenths in orange, and my hundredths in, I don't know, pink or something. So if you guys do have separate colored pencils at home, um, this might be a really good time to use them. My brain kind of works that way with color coding, but if you don't, don't worry about it. But if you are feeling like you can't quite figure out which place value to look at, color coding is definitely helpful, okay? So I'm just going to call on you guys this time and we can do it together. Uh, Mr. Geo, let's call on you first. Okay. Okay. So Geo, what is in, what whole number am I looking at right now? The seven. Yes, sir. So I would underline my seven, right? Uh-huh. Geo, which direction do I need to look? To the right, which is the tenth place. Ooh, where do you use your place value language? Okay. What do you notice about our tens place? It's a zero. What's going to happen to my seven? It's going to stay the same. Yeah. Ha, ha. Wow, that was easy, wasn't it, Gio? Yeah. I thought those zeros would trick you guys, but apparently not. Hey, Gio, I'm going to keep you on then with me. All right. Let's do our tenths now. What number is in my tenths place? A zero. Aye, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now what do I do? You go to the right to your hundredths place. Oh my gosh, your vocabulary is phenomenal today, Gio. All right, what's in my hundredths place? A three, so you round down. Well, wait, I have a zero, what do I do? You add another zero. Or I could just leave it, right? Yeah. So this is where you guys, this is a little bit odd. And, you will get, and you'll get more of these with zeros in them. My three can't round up that zero. It's too low, right? If there was a six, five, six, seven, eight, nine here, my zero would become a one. Mm. But in this case, like Gio said, it's gonna stay a zero. So it says round it to the nearest tenths place. It's gonna look kind of funny. Seven and zero tenths, which is the same as my whole number. But my hundredths are so small that I can't even make, I can't round it to a tenth. Thank you for being brave, Gio. Yeah. All right, my last contestant. I would love to hear from Asher. 
Are you with us, Mr. Asher? I say my name. <laughs> All right, Asher, what number is in my hundredth place? Uh, a nine is in the hundredth place. Well, let's double check. Tenths? Wait, no, sorry, three. There you go, good. So I'd underline my three. Which direction do I look? Uh, left. Oh, well, our three, from our three, we're going to go right. Right, yeah. I'm See, if, guys, if you like the color coding, I like, and again, if you have colored pencils or even colored pens, I like seeing the different colored arrows to the right and the underlining. I don't know if that helps you guys at all, but hopefully at least for the lesson it does. All right, Asher, so I'm at my three in the hundreds place. I look right. I see a nine. What do I do? You round up. Yes, so my three becomes a? Four. Do I change anything before that, Asher? What about my seven, my tenths? What about this over here? Do those guys stay the same? I think so. They do, yeah. So my seven stays the same. I still have zero tenths. That doesn't change. But then my hundredths become a four because I have these nine thousandths that's gonna bump my hundredths up from three hundredths to four hundredths. And then anything after that can become a zero. You could put your zero here if you want. If not, you could just leave it. I would probably just leave it blank, um, knowing that nothing is there. I like leaving it blank because if it says to round to the nearest hundredths, it's good if you stop at the hundredths place and go no further, like we did here. How are we feeling? I'm gonna leave this up for just a quick second to make sure everyone has this in um, their notebooks. And again, if you have this in your notebook now, but you didn't have colored pencils or markers or anything in front of you now, you could always go back after the lesson and kind of color code it if that's, again, if your brain works that way, that's helpful. If not, um, it's really totally up to you, okay?